I'm Dr. Ryan Abel from The Movement Fix. This is Movement, Movement Fix Monday. Movement Fix Monday. This is Chris Johnson, PT. And uh, I'm really excited about this video actually because we have a true form runner. We have a running expert. I don't know about that. I would call you running expert. Yeah. And we have a novice runner, me. Gifted sprinter. We'll find out. We're yeah. actually going to race. Oh, We've okay. talked about this, right? Yeah, you, you we're conveniently gonna, picked today. We're not going to race today. Oh, okay. No, because you just did an eight mile race or whatever. Yeah. We're going to do, Chris and I are going to do a race where we, we're going to run a mile and we're going to record the mile. And then we're going to do a 400 and then we're going to do a 100 meter sprint, right? Yeah, it sounds great. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, I know it's going to happen on the mile. Yeah. I know it's going to happen on all three. Yeah, you're going to be in for a rude awakening. Really? On the 100? Uh, yeah. You think you're going to beat me you on the 100? You think I'm just some scrawny distance runner. Do you think you're going to beat me on the 100? Uh, I think I very well could. We'll find out yeah. at some point. Okay, yeah. so what we're going to do, though, is we're going to talk about, you're going to analyze my running on this yeah. and talk about gait and how you'd analyze it, et cetera, et cetera. So, and let's start by saying that you are a healthy runner. I am. I don't okay. have any running pain. Yeah. And so one of the questions I would ask is, how familiar is Ryan with a true form? Uh, because it's a, it's incredibly different from a standard treadmill. Mm -hmm. So anyone who's been on one can attest to that. So yeah, I'm acclimated enough where I could run, and it is like I'm, I'm used to it enough. Okay. I haven't put like 50, 100 miles on on it though. Gotcha. I've probably run a couple miles on it. Okay. Which is enough where you know like it feels normal, sort of. And one of the things that a lot of people ask runners is, do they heel strike? or do they rely on a, a midfoot or a forefoot strike? And that's something that, I guess it's fine to ask, but you can't trust uh, their response to that. So I just wanna put that out there um, from the get-go. Um, that's unreliable, mm -hmm. right, to ask a runner what their foot strike is. Um, and it's also gonna depend on a number of factors. But anyways, let's, uh, let's get you rolling here. Okay, so what do you want me to do? So just go ahead and take it up to what a conversation pace run would be. And I'll just let you get settled in for a little bit. So with the true form, um, with the way it's designed, it's essentially gonna foster a mid to four foot strike. And we can see Ryan demonstrating that. Um, you'll also see a little bit of a forward trunk lean. So when would this be relevant to a clinical situation? Well, it's a great way or a great modality to simply shift loads. So if someone were dealing with, say, medial tibial stress syndrome or um, anterior knee pain, this would be a great modality because, again, you're just shifting from perhaps a bony shock attenuation strategy to more of a musculotendinous, which is what's going to happen um, by running with a, a mid to four foot strike. The other thing is research by Cram and colleagues has shown that when you start to go from a level to a three, six, and nine percent grade, that it's gonna directly impact the foot strike. So as you go up to a steeper grade, you're gonna start to shift towards more a mid to four foot strike. Um, so again, people have to make sure that they have the calf capacity and have completely rehabbed any calf injuries or if they're dealing with an Achilles tendinopathy, that may not be desirable. So again, you have to really consider the context. But I would say all in all with Ryan, um, relatively quiet strike pattern. Um, he looks balanced, he's not losing control and that's, that's somewhat challenging when you're running on the true form. Um, I would say perhaps we could get him to turn his feet over a little bit faster, um, which is essentially uh, the ultimate goal is to reduce someone's stride length. Um, but all in all, I don't want to nitpick. He's running healthy, um, so I, my instinct is not to change too much. Like I said, um, perhaps getting him to increase his cadence or his step rate while we're keeping the running velocity constant. And all that would do is reduce the magnitude of each individual load. Um, and one of the things that you see with sprinters, so that's your background, you were 100, 100 meter? Yeah, and jumping. Okay, so you know Ryan also has been trained to, when he's coming out of the blocks, to really increase his stride length 
until he gets down the, towards the end of the race around the home stretch, at which point he may turn his feet over faster. So part of this may be just something that he's focused on over the course of his career. Um, and did, did that give you pace? I didn't see what it said. Yeah, it was uh, like eight. Eight, so eight miles per hour? Yeah. Yeah, so 7.30 pace. So to me, that looks like that would be roughly your conversation pace run. Um, so any feedback, questions, concerns? That's interesting. So you're saying, like, you think my, my cadence is a little bit slower than it should be because I was a, a sprinter and I wanted to take those long steps? Yeah, to get out of the block. So... Um, again, I, th I think that that's something that perhaps is influencing what we're seeing right now. Huh. Yeah. So. Got it. So, so when you're watching or analyzing someone's gait, mm -hmm. you're listening for, you know, how hard is their foot hitting? You're looking at, you know, how many steps per minute? You're looking at, you know, generally, are they turned, you know, like you said, balanced? Yeah. Well, let me simplify this for you. Um, for anyone who has spent time with me in a clinic or um, has attended one of my courses or just heard me talk online, um, these are the S's of treadmill analysis. So we could go strike, foot strike, okay, sound, step rate, speed, surface, shoes, slope, swing, okay? And that could be arm swing as well as leg swing. All right, so those are the things that I'm generally considering when I'm doing a running gait analysis. Um, obviously, this is going to be a little bit different from a treadmill. And treadmill and overground running are not identical. There are definitely differences that have been documented in the literature. But it gives us a, an approximation or a good window into someone's running, provided they have some experience running on a treadmill. Otherwise, you know, make sure that you're at least affording you know, five to six minutes um, of a familiar a familiarization period. Um, but yeah, those are the factors that I'm looking at. Mm. And based on someone's complaints, I'm just trying to shift the loads to see what happens. Got it. And if we can do some very simple interventions to shift the loads and that reduces someone's pain, well, that starts to mitigate threat and prove to that patient that their pain is malleable. Mm. All right, so again, um, and we don't need to shift these loads long term. You know, we, we can do it short term to try and desensitize things and then slowly let them plug in. But um, I'll quote Matt Walsh here, who's a, who's a physical therapist in the Portland area, who's um, just an incredible clinician. Repetitively hitting the ground in the same manner is not a healthy running strategy. Hmm. Okay. So you're not saying if you watch someone and they heel strike, you go, oh, you're all messed up. You're heel striking. Absolutely not. And what you see among elite runners is as they get towards the end of a race that most of them will end up resorting to a heel striking strategy because research has shown that that's actually more economical. But someone's going to say, you know, back before shoes, nobody would ever heel strike. Yeah, well, I think that it's a bit reductionist to take that standpoint. I think you have to look at the context. You have to, you know, say, is this someone who's dealing with injury or dealing with pain mm. or is this someone who's a performance runner? Okay, so I think there's a lot, of, a lot of different things to consider, and I think that we try to take these blanket approaches. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, if this is what the, world, the world's top runners are doing at the end of a race, yeah. our bodies are not dumb, all right? So they're doing that for a reason. It's because they need to keep hitting the ground hard to run fast. So if their calf muscle is fatigued, well, naturally, to hit the ground harder, especially if you have a cushioned heel, you're gonna do that through a heel striking strategy. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you were gonna drive a stake into the ground and you're at the end of a long run, your calves are fatigued, and you have this cushion barrier, you're gonna drive that in with yeah. your heel. Got okay? it. So it's a way to, it's, a, it's really a way to, you know, keep going without overstressing one particular thing. Yeah. So it's interesting what you said about the true form in terms of it makes, it essentially encourages a midfoot or forefoot strike. That means that people, when, when they're running here, like, their calves are gonna be lit. Yeah, so that factors into what's on the program agenda for the day. Right, so like, yeah, if there's some other, you know, calf intensive things, yeah. might, you know, it could easily lead to some overload. And also, too, if, if people are only ever running here, they're never exposing themselves like other, you know, um, strategies or methods of how to absorb load, and how to, you know, how to run. Yeah, and I'll tell you my, uh, in own, my own personal story. Um, I was doing a lot of running in New York and I started doing some more brisk running uh -huh. and I got into trouble um, with my forefoot on the plantar aspect. 
um, I was dealing with a second MTP joint issue, mm -hmm. um, and I actually had to revert to a gentle heel striking strategy, which just to deload. Call, it. call it a call it a full footed stride though when you're working with people because people hear heel they hear heel strike and they immediately associate a negative connotation yeah, with it. It's like trained now. It's almost like built in. Heel yeah. strike. Oh, yeah. And I can't tell you how many people who have come in with calf muscle complex injuries or Achilles tendinopathy, and we get them using a gentle heel striking strategy, and that's Michael Light's research um, in 2016. So um, mm. again, so complex more, it's, issues. It's more complicated than just saying, everyone should do this kind of strike all the time, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because when I was running my half marathon, I used what I learned from you, where I would run for a little bit with mm -hmm. one strategy, and then I would switch it up on purpose. Mm -hmm. I'd go, okay, now I'm gonna heel strike for a little bit. Now I'm going to midfoot strike for a little bit as a way to try to you know, not over yeah. stress one particular area of my lower legs. Well, and then this plays on the whole concept of variability. Okay, you're essentially developing you know a more robust system because you have more options. Uh, but again, I want to be clear: when you're racing, you're going as hard as you can, and you're going to fatigue. So you have to be very careful when people start cherry picking these pictures and image pictures or videos online because. When fatigue sets in, generally all hell breaks loose, and you're seeing numerous strategies of people who are unwilling to accept defeat. Yeah, like they're going to do whatever it takes. Exactly. And then, so that's where I'll see, you know, like pictures like that, where it's someone with what we would consider terrible mechanics. It's like, Correct. look, they can do it. But, you know, maybe we're looking at the very end of a race where they're willing to do whatever it takes to win, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And you also people, see people highlighting certain angles to the exclusion of other angles, which may show a set of common denominators among all these world-class runners. Oh, so um, again, it's uh, I guess people always slanting the story to uh, cater to their bias. Right. Not that I'm not guilty so of that. So what the hell are we doing right now that's slanting it that we're not even realizing? You know? Yeah, well, that's <laughs> that what, would be the real question. What message are you communicating? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. cool. So that gives you guys an idea of when you're dealing with either a treadmill or you know a true form some things you can think about with how do I analyze someone's running or their gait? What are the things I should be thinking about? And I can't believe I got as tired as I just did on that. You know what, I really feel it in my calves. Yeah, well, and that's, that's to be expected. Yeah. But at the same time with, with Ryan, he's running, you're not doing a ton of distance, right? Though you have no. done some uh, half marathons over the past year. Yeah. So again, he's running healthy. My instinct is not to fool with him. Mm. Right. So yeah. if someone was having pain, then you would tinker with some of those variables more than you would with me. Yeah, to shift loads mm -hmm. more Got than it. anything. Got it. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing your expertise yeah. with us. Yeah. Make sure to follow Chris on Instagram at ZarenPT. And you also have a sweet membership site where you post and you're very active to help people learn more about running for clinicians, trainers, coaches. Yeah. Uh, where can people learn more about that? So that's just under my website, ChrisJohnsonPT.com. It's called The Runner Zone. Um, it's sort of a, an eclectic learning platform. So I, I try to go live almost every day doing Q&A sessions um, on there as well. I started up something, uh, actually it's going to start next week, called Fireside with CJ. I didn't even tell you about that. I, this yeah. is the first I'm hearing about it. So. Yeah, so and it's uh, <laughs> lesson plans, it's journal clubs, it's video tutorials. Um, and we're over 100 members strong right now, so it's awesome. And it's, uh, it's just a powerful networking community of clinicians, coaches, we have uh, physicians, we have psychologists, we mm. have nutritionists, we have, you know, top athletes across the world. So it's just an awesome community, and uh, yeah, it's been fun to grow that. Awesome, great. Yeah. So if you guys want to learn more from Chris, check out Runner Zone, and that's what we got for you guys this week. Yep. See you next time. Thanks for having me. <laughs>